Anaplan is the big daddy of planning software. I don't think that any other tool comes close to it in terms of scalability and functionality. So in today's video, I'm going to show you four advanced ways that big complex companies like Coca-Cola, AWS, Adobe use Anaplan in their companies today. And by the way, if you're new here, my name is Mags. I used to sell software for a few years and now I make videos trying to explain what software does and what it can do for you. Let's dive in. Okay, use case number one, long range planning. If you don't know what long range planning is, let me quickly explain. Think of Uber in 2013. They just raised $258 million and their long-term plan in the next five to 10 years was to IPO. Long range planning is the exercise of figuring out the KPIs and targets that a company has to hit on an annual basis in order to meet its long-term objectives. Okay, so we have this dashboard called long range planning process. It links to other processes that are part of the long range planning process like revenue planning and that sort of thing. It also shows a bunch of KPIs for our different regions over the next five years which we can draw into uh, and let's actually go into the revenue plan. This has our revenue targets which increase based on an assumed growth rate and if we change the target growth rate from 3% to 8% all of the charts and tables here update and it gives us an alert saying that we don't actually have capacity to hit that goal. That capacity can be defined differently depending on what your business is, whether that's kind of sales reps or warehouse space or whatever you're doing to define capacity, right? You also notice that when we took the growth rate from three to 8%, it cascaded that goal down to our projected goal for the different products that we're selling. We can keep these automatic targets or we can override them like this for individual products. So reducing the target for hybrids from 126k to 125k so that the rest of the product line revenue goals make it up to the overall 8% target figure instead. Then we probably want to see how these changes affect the financial statements. We have a dashboard here for liquidity management. Let's open that and we can see that it shows us our projected cash balance. Right now, it looks like we have enough cash on hand for the next 10 years. Now, if we decide to increase the minimum requirements around cash on hand from 1 million to 2 million because we're going after more aggressive revenue growth, we can see that it increases our interest expense. So maybe instead of using debt to plug the gap in our minimum cash requirements, we decide to explore a different option instead. Maybe we decide to see what would happen if we issued shares instead. We go to this dashboard over here and we put in an estimated share price and how much money we want to raise. And Anaplan will automatically calculate how many shares will need to be issued and how much cash we'd get in return. Then we come back to the liquidity management dashboard and we see that the interest cost from the credit facility has now been removed. Once we're happy with these changes to our long range plan, we simply lock it in. And when you lock it in, all of your top line plans then cascade down to your other plans that are dependent on this, like your annual operating plan, your headcount plan, and so on. Use case number two, sales planning. And a plan allows you to set targets, create quotas, and manage your reps all within the platform. And actually speaking of targets, my personal target is to get to 100 subscribers on YouTube before the end of the year. So if you're enjoying this video or you're kind of getting some use out of it, click the subscribe button so I can make more videos reviewing software and explaining what it does. Anyway, back to Anaplan. So here's the dashboard which links to the sales planning processes at our company. Before we assign accounts or create quotas, we want to score the market so that we know what potential each territory has, right? We have an overview of our accounts here, which we can then drill into. And now we can see all of these accounts. And there are two columns actually. One that shows us how we've ranked that account, whether it's an A account, B, C, D. And another column that Anaplan has ranked for for us using predictive insights based on different pieces of data. That predictive score is not a black box. We can actually go into the individual account and see which signals and data Anaplan is using to rank this account into an A. And we can review that data before we decide whether to keep this an A account or demote it to C or B or whatever. Once we've ranked our account, we can then set goals. Here we can see there's a target of $225 million set by finance. And we can see how this breaks down across our different geographies. Once our sales leaders happy with these numbers, they can just submit their targets for their region. And then we can look at where the gaps in our capacity might be based on these top down targets. We have a map here of the US which shows us in green where the optimal place to hire people would be. So we can come in here and add a person to the Northeast, for example, then the next best hire would be in the Rust Belt and so on. And Anaplan tells us this. So we can dynamically see how adding new headcount would help us to fill the gap between our targets and our current capacity. And actually, we can even just ask Anaplan to 
assign all the headcount for us by clicking release headcount here. So Anaplan gives us the most optimal hiring plan based on that 10 person gap that we currently have to fill. Then we can jump into strategic account assignment here and we can see that in the Northeast, we currently have 30 accounts, only 21 of which are actually currently assigned to our two existing strategic account executives. And then we can come in and assign the remaining nine accounts to our 2BH hire. We, we still haven't hired yet. We click assign and now all of the accounts in this territory, in the Northeast territory have been assigned. Then all that's left to do is actually go and hire this person. Then we can go into the territory optimization dashboard where we can see the potential for all of our territories and the upper and lower bound of where we're likely to end up in each territory. Now we can see that this territory has way higher potential than the rest of the regions, which means a bunch of reps are likely to overshoot their quotas while others are barely able to hit theirs. So we can click optimize territory, which ends up redistributing accounts and creating a completely new territory as well, which Anaplan does for us. The blue bar shows us our new potential and all of these territories are now between the upper and lower bounds of where we expect the reps to end up, which is good. Then we can look at how this has trickled down to each individual rep's quotas here. And every AE now has that final list of accounts with a territory well-defined within Anaplan. Okay, use case number three, headcount planning. We have a headcount process monitor dashboard here and it shows us the top-down headcount plan for the year submitted by our CFO or the board or whatever. It also shows the bottom-up headcount plan submitted by these departments with a variance showing between these bottom-up plans and the top-down targets and some commentary to explain why there's a difference. We can approve or reject these plans from the departments directly from the dashboard and then we can see that there are five departments that yet to submit their plans at all. So we can send them a push notification asking them to submit their plans. The finance team can then log into the dashboard on Anaplan. They can see the headcount planning targets over here and how they're making progress towards those targets. It looks like they have a bit of extra budget to spend on additional headcount so they can create a placeholder for a new hire here, filling in the details about their comp, location, job title and so on. And then when you set a start date, you can see that this brings you in line with the department top down plan and you're still in budget. And once you're happy with the plan, it can just be submitted for the review here. HR, can then just come back to the main dashboard and approve that submission from the finance team. As time goes by, departments can fill in actuals so that our executives can see what the forecast the actual variance is, why that variance exists, along with the kind of reason code and commentary provided by different departments. Okay, use case number four, demand planning. Demand planning is mission critical for companies that sell physical products who need to accurately forecast their demand so they can efficiently manage their inventory and maximize their revenue. You. So here's a dashboard that shows us our demand forecast. We can just adjust this as usual to see the demand forecast for different products. The first thing we're going to do before forecasting though is decide which forecasting algorithm we're going to use. Anaplan allows you to bucket your products based along demand variability and volume and then this informs which algorithms you're going to use to forecast future demand. So for example a low variability and high volume product would use the AI machine learning methodologies and high variability and low volume would use statistical and alternative forecasting methodologies. Anaplan automatically assigns your product for you based on your historical data, but you can override these if you want. Once you've chosen the methodology that you want to apply to your different product lines, you can see your demand forecast is broken out by 30 different algorithms along with a recommended best fit algorithm based on your data. This will include not just your historical data, but additional third party data sets based on you know, macroeconomic factors as well. You can see the historical data here and the unit forecast which are broken down um, for each algorithm over time. And based on the forecast, we can estimate that our demand is probably going to fall within this range with an 80% certainty. Once you've settled on demand forecast, you can get inputs from different teams to give their kind of ideas about what demand will look like as well. So this is a dashboard for your sales team where they can review and input their forecast. For example, they might decide to adjust the forecast based on an event happening in February with a reason code and comment. And then once the forecast is done, they can just submit it, which would notify the demand planner and put it through the review process. You might also get your customers to input their estimates into your demand planning process as well. So we have this dashboard here that has a demand forecast. The customers can override numbers here. For example, the customers can tell us that actually we're going to need way more units in June, but fewer units in August. They can just enter those numbers. Obviously, the customer's access to the demand plan will be limited to this view, which they can log into. Then all of these cross-functional demand plans come together in a dashboard like this, where we have forecasts from sales, from marketing, from our customers, and so on. And then we can review what the baseline forecast is along with the individual adjustments made by different teams. Before pushing the plan downstream to the production team, you can create a few different scenarios 
which we can then compare alongside each other based on the metrics that we care about. So here we have three different scenarios, optimistic, pessimistic, baseline, we can see how each of these impacts our revenue, margin, carrying costs, because that's what we currently care about. And then we can select the final plan here, let's say high growth and submit it. And that will notify all the teams on Anaplan. If that looked like a complete overkill for your business, you can check out some of the more lightweight fp planning tools that I've reviewed here and here.